Uh, this is the Greenfield Acres Phase 4 Drainage Improvements Project uh, meeting. This is the 90% design meeting. It's actually, we're right at the end of design. Uh, today's Monday, September 26th. I'm the project manager, Michael Wellbaum. I have with us on the call today, Brian Darby. He's the uh, project engineer on this project with James Diot Engineering, Inc. Um, Brian and his team have, have worked really hard to try to wrap up the design on this phase four. It's gonna be the largest phase that we've done, but the good news is we'll handle it all at one time and be done. Um, we, uh, I don't think anyone from Council Member Flores' office is here, but I would like to just say he's been a great supporter of this project and of the stormwater uh, capital delivery team as a whole. He's, he's very interested in uh, managing flood uh, flood waters and, and the risk to the community. And so he's been a great partner and we really appreciate his support. So tonight I've got uh, just a real brief presentation. I know we probably wanna to get to the Cowboys game. So I'm gonna try to get this done well in advance of that. Uh, I'm gonna go over a little bit of the project background and schedule with you. We'll talk some about project scope. I'll show you uh, uh, pieces of the plans to kind of show you what we're talking, uh, what we're planning to do at a high level. Uh, and then we'll get to questions at the end. So I'm gonna get going. Uh, if you've seen this presentation before, you've probably seen this map. This is kind of an overview of the entire Greenfield Acres uh, uh, neighborhood. You'll see um, the areas in green are areas that we've already completed uh, projects in. The, of course, the detention ponds to the south, uh, several of the streets we've done, the area in yellow or the streets shaded in yellow, those are the ones that we are doing in phase four. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the, of the entire project map. Um, this project is primarily a stormwater uh, project, although we've had a great uh, partnership with the streets department. That's how we're able to repave all of the streets uh, instead of just doing a trench repair or something like that. We're, we're able to go in and do a, a complete street reconstruction uh, and provide a much better uh, pavement for you at the end. Of course, the reason for this project is uh, neighborhood flooding. Um, there's been widespread flooding throughout this neighborhood and not just the Greenfield neighborhood, but even to neighborhoods to the south. So by putting in detention ponds, collecting all of the stormwater, we've reduced the lot to lot drainage or actually the, the drainage that goes from lots across the street to other lots. Uh, so as, we, as we've been doing this, we've been in improving the ability for the neighborhood to drain to the detention ponds, and we've, we've been able to uh, reduce the amount of flooding that happens further south uh, in the other neighborhoods as well. This is, of course, a multi-phase project, and we're in the fourth and final phase. So we're looking forward to being done. I know you guys are too, so uh, we'll get this phase done and we'll be, we'll be complete with the project. So I mentioned that design is complete. Um, we actually completed it this month. We're slated to advertise in October, uh, most likely as early as next week, we'll have an advertisement date. We'll take bids uh, end of the month into November. And if all goes well, we should be under construction in February and construction will run through about October of next year. So we'll be going through the spring and summer um, and have it in done, in done in time for the holidays in 23. So I'm gonna go over now uh, some, of the, um, some of the details of the project. So this first page is an overview that just kind of shows you a little bit more detail about all of the streets that we're doing. Uh, you see green filled up at the top of the page. The blue and orange lines, blue is, is storm drain. Uh, the orange lines are sewer lines. We're also working on T Head and Northridge Road. Uh, and then we're coming back and doing some work along Cindy Lane to regrade the ditches and, uh, and make improvements there. So I'm gonna get into a little, little closer blow up of each segment. We'll start with Northridge Road this is over by Lee Crest Lane. Uh, the storm drain system will start, you see it in blue, running to the east. We're also replacing sewer line on this segment. You'll see it in orange on the screen. 
Um, the sewer line replacement is to accommodate the storm drain, the sewer conflict, the sewer services were in conflict. So in order to reduce that and eliminate that conflict, we're, we're reconstructing the sewer lines as well. Uh, you'll notice on this screen too, uh, if you're looking at this visually, you'll see some green hatched areas at driveway approaches. Uh, in some cases, we need to reconstruct a driveway approach because of our project, but in other areas, uh, the, the guidelines now uh, require replacing drive approaches with concrete approaches if they aren't already. So in those areas um, outside of our project limits, you may see a few of those drive approaches that are being done as well. And then uh, the purple lines are contour lines. They're, they're really kind of, it's really kind of hard to get too much detail, but um, we're trying to minimize grading uh, in, in lots. So you'll see some contour lines we're grading, but we've truly really tried to limit that uh, as much as possible to so that we don't have deep ditches or uh, ditches that are hard to mow and maintain. Um, we've run into that in, in some areas and we're trying to, to uh, remediate that here in this project and not, not do the same thing again. Uh, as you continue down Northridge Road, You'll see the line ends there at Cindy Lane. Uh, that's where our existing system was built a few years ago and we're tying into uh, what we've left for these projects to tie into. Uh, and, then, and then you'll see we, there, there's a gap and then we pick up the line on, on Northridge Road to the east. And that line continues on. We're gonna flip the screen a little bit. So now north is to the, to the left of your, of your screen we're coming down Northridge Road on the right side of the page, turning and running up Lee, uh, I'm sorry, running up T Head Drive. Same kind of situation where we've got uh, area drains that are going in, uh, kind of centered on property lines where we can, minimizing grading and replacing drive approaches where they're needed. And then this line, uh, this line will continue on to send it to uh, Greenfield. Uh, Greenfield Road, but I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit. So when you go up to Greenfield Road, you'll see the high point right in the center of your screen. To the left, that system all drains back to the system that was put into Cindy Lane uh, a few years ago. And same situation with area drains in the front yard, some drive approaches that are being reconstructed. And then as you go to the, to the east, you'll see another line that that starts and runs back to the east. This line uh, eventually ties into the line on T head. You'll see this gap here. All of the water from the, from the west is coming down city lane, turning and going down T head. The rest of the project will drain to the east and connect to a system that goes into the neighborhood to the east of Greenfield Acres. Uh, again, same situation, area drains in, in the borrow ditch or in the the parkway area, um, as, as little grading as we can do and uh, driveway approach replacements where needed. And then these next couple of sheets kind of show you a little bit on Cindy Lane. This was kind of hard to convey uh, in this type of meeting, but I'll kind of, I'll try to talk you through it. Um, at Greenfield Road on the east side, that culvert's no longer needed. So instead, we're going to put water, capture water and put it into the pipe, which was part of the, the plan originally. Uh, and then going south down Cindy Lane, we're putting in area drains and for the most part, eliminating driveway culverts that won't be needed anymore. We're not gonna replace anything or, or take out the drive approaches uh, but we're simply going to uh, remove the need for those driveway culverts by putting in these area drains as we move down Cindy Lane. Uh, the ditches get filled in um, quite a bit. There'll still be a couple of feet deep, uh, but the side slopes will be much shallower, uh, much easier to maintain along Cindy Lane on both sides of the road. Uh, and then we come down a little bit more grading work is going to happen from North Hill going down, uh, but it's mostly fill. Um, 
that ditch section may not be as uh, filled in as other sections, but it's still the same concept of putting in a different type of inlet structure that will allow us to regrade the ditches and make them less steep um, and less deep. And that's the concept all the way down to Northridge Road. So again, overall, this is the project area with uh, new storm drain lines, new inlets. Uh, I did mention that we're reconstructing the pavement. All of the, the pavement area that we're disturbing will be reconstructed. On Cindy Lane, it's going to be um, kind of a mill and overlay situation where those, uh, where those tie-ins occur. So we are going to have to redo a little bit of the pavement on Cindy Lane, but we'll try to keep that to a minimum. Uh, and uh, with the end result being the ability to regrade Cindy Lane. So I went through this kind of quick because mostly I want to hear from you guys. Uh, I'm going to open the floor to um, the questions. And uh, I did notice uh, that Councilmember Flores was able to join us. So I want to say again, uh, uh, thank you, Councilman Flores. We, we really appreciate your support on this project. Um, this has been a quite a long, lengthy project, but we're, we're glad to be wrapping it up. And we do appreciate your support to get that done. Um, if you would like to uh, uh, make a comment or two, I'm happy to let you uh, uh, speak. Um, if not, I'm going to just move on to some questions. I do have a few questions, and, and council member, if you want to say say a few words, you're welcome to. Just kind of, uh, I guess, send a message to the chat, and I'll stop for a second. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, I can. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm listening in. I'm driving right now. Uh, you know, I just came out of another meeting, so I'm joining you, at least as far as the audio is concerned, but I've been following along. So I, in the interest of time, I'll just let you continue, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to go to questions in the chat. I've got several questions. One is from Jason. Uh, when it's time, I live at 6116 Greenfield. Will my, my area around my driveway remain flat with no bar ditch? Let me... Um, I'm not as familiar with exact locations, but they are on the map. So I'm going to scroll back through here and see if we can find you, Jason. Uh, 6116. 61, so this area at, in front of 6116, there are uh, inlets going in. These are the kind of the square drop inlets. There will be one uh, kind of on the west west front corner of your property and another one on the east to pick up stormwater between the two. Uh, we put in two because we don't want to put in a driveway culvert and make a ditch all the way across your, your front. There will have to be a little bit of grading work to get water into this inlet, but I don't expect that it's going to be uh, very deep at all, maybe 18 inches, uh, something like that. Just looking at the contours, uh, I don't expect that you'll have have much of a ditch in front of your house, uh, but in order to convey water to the inlets, we'll have to we'll have to do a little bit of work in that area. Uh, Andy asked, "Was this project delayed? I thought it was to be done this year. Um, there was a little bit of a delay during design, Andy. We had uh, we had some issues uh, trying to work around sewer." and uh, also working with the streets department on exactly what we were going to do with paving. Uh, unfortunately, that took a few months at the beginning of the year. I'd initially hoped to have this project under construction. Uh, we also had a, had a little bit of a delay and pushed this project to start at the first of the year so that Atmos could get in. Uh, you, you may notice them working in this area. Uh, they want to replace some of the aging gas infrastructure before we do our project so they don't have to tear things up later, uh, which we thought was a great idea. Uh, so we did delay it a little bit just to give them time to get in and get everything constructed uh, ahead of time. So 
The schedule that we're on now, though, is, is a pretty well set schedule. I don't anticipate anything at this point um, that would that would delay uh, delay us constructing it. And Andy also asked in the past when they worked on North Hill, the machinery that that tapped down the road before laying of the pavement caused minor damage to the building in the back of their property. What recourse do I have if the same problem presents itself, especially if the damage is more severe due to being closer to the construction? Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what happens, so I, I don't know how to answer that specifically, uh, but certainly if there's, um, if something is damaged during construction, generally we have our contractor uh, take care of that and and resolve whatever that issue might be. Um, Andy, I'm going to show my contact information at the at the end, and again, and I'm happy to if you want to give me a call. Uh, I'm happy to discuss that in more detail with you if you'd like. Uh, Jason asked. Um, Ask a question about w working next to his driveway and if they're widening, widening, the, widening his approach. The general rule that we follow on drive approaches when we're replacing them is 11 feet minimum and then match if it's wider. So if you have a double driveway, for example, we would put back a double, double wide drive approach to match the rest of the driveway. Um, if, you're, if your driveway, for example, was 10 feet, we would put in an 11 foot wide approach because that's kind of the minimum standard that, uh, that we work with. If you have specific driveway issues though, again, I'll, uh, I'll show my contact, share my contact information with you. I'm happy to have a, a discussion outside the meeting in, in particular details. Um, Caleb asked, how deep are the ditches going to be in front of 6121 Greenfield Road? Let me go back to Greenfield. Sixty-one twenty-one Greenfield, uh, in, in that area, um, we're not going to have much of a ditch at all. That's kind of an area that's, that's um, uh, not it, the drainage patterns start to pick up on the west side of the west driveway. So at that point where the vacant, kind of the vacant lot is, there'll be a little bit of a ditch that'll start and go to a drop inlet that you see on the screen right there between 6121 and 6123. Uh, Rod's asked about Cindy Lane and specifically what we're doing along Cindy Lane. Uh, I'll share these pictures again and, and kind of walk through it. Um, but essentially what we're doing is in areas where we can, we're replacing, um, we're replacing the safety in treatment, the, the wide uh, kind of long opening that you see in the ditch that was put in with the Cindy Lane project with a square area drain that can be raised to be more at grade. Uh, you'll see that at several locations. Uh, in the areas where we can, we're going to uh, eliminate the need for a driveway culvert. So water won't flow from one end of Cindy Lane all the way down to the other. It'll get picked up incrementally as it as it collects in the in the ditch area, and then be uh, conveyed downstream. Uh, in front of, well, let's see. Um, as we come up to North Hill Lane, there's not a there's not a um, a lateral already in place to pick anything up. So we're while we're filling that ditch and regrading it a little bit, um, it still has to convey the water down all the way down to North Hill. And you'll see in this area, each one of these lines is, is represents one foot of depth. So if we started right here at the right of way, we're going down one foot and maybe a maybe a quarter. So so maybe 18 inches or, or less down uh, at this particular point in the yard. So the ditch should be much shallower than it is today. Um, it'll still be present, um, but not as present as it is in, in some cases. Um, the only place where we really had trouble 
um, filling in the ditch and reducing it significantly as in this one stretch from North Hill uh, uh, down to, uh, well, maybe one of the first driveways. Um, that section will still have a ditch that looks like maybe a couple of feet deep, two and a half, um, but should be less significant than it is today. And then, of course, we have a, a area drain to pick up the water at the end. So, Rod, hopefully that explained um, what what we're doing, but I'm happy to, again, uh, if you want to call me, if any of you, any of you want to call me, I'm happy to have a more detailed conversation or, or visit with you out in the field and show you what we're doing. Um, Andy asked uh, 6101 Greenfield, uh, they have a row of crepe myrtles running along T-head. Will the roots of these trees be damaged if they grade too deeply? And can this grading be as shallow as possible? Let me go back because I do think we looked at that. Well, this is gonna be a hard one because you're right on the, right on the edge of where, uh, where my slides break. Yeah, so that other field. So um, there is some grading that's going to occur in this in this area. I believe this is where your crepe myrtles are. Um, the grading does not extend beyond the right of way. So at the right of way, we're tying into existing. So there is a little bit of grading work uh, that's going to occur just outside the right of way. This might be something that I'll visit with uh, with our design engineer on and just. Uh, clarify that we're that we're good. I know we did go back and do some additional survey and try to uh, nail down these areas. So, uh, Andy, I may need to get a better answer and, uh, and and send it back to you. Um, Mark said he, it looks like there will be a storm inlet on T Head at North Hill. There are a group of trees in that area. Will those trees be removed for the inlet? I know a neighbor was wanting to remove those trees, but the City of Fort Worth told them that those trees were in the City of Fort Worth right of way and not to remove them. Uh, if they're in the right of way and in the way, I, I believe I, I believe I know that area too, and I think we did have the need to remove some uh, tea head at North Hill. Uh, you may be talking about these here at 6100 North Hill. Um, I know um, I know we did have some discussions about these trees in the right of way, and I think there is there may be some that are unavoidable. I don't have the full set of plans handy to look at that um, on the northwest corner. Yeah. Mark, I'll have to get you an answer back uh, separately. Uh, I believe I still have your contact information. Um, on the southwest corner, we're not going to impact any trees. Uh, we're outside of that area with the one inlet at the corner. The other inlet, I don't believe, is going to encroach into the trees either. So if it's on the south side of North Hill, uh, I think we're okay. Rod asked for about the timeline for the Cindy Lane part of the project. Um, I don't I don't really know what to tell you about timeline of individual pieces. However, we will have a meeting prior to construction uh, that should occur uh, maybe in January. It'll be before we can start construction on the project, but after we know who our contractor is, uh, that would be a great time uh, to answer that question. Normally, we don't. We don't get too involved in the sequencing of construction for for the contractors. Uh, we kind of leave it up to them to sequence and plan out the work uh, as they need to. Uh, certainly, they're going to need to have some of this infrastructure in before they can close off some Cindy Lane infrastructure, um, most notably the piece at Greenfield that ties into Cindy Lane. Uh, so I wouldn't expect Cindy Lane would be first on the list. Um, it, it may drag off 
towards the middle or end of the project, uh, but that's certainly something we can get uh, more information on from the from the contractor when we know who that is. Andy, I don't have your contact information. If, if uh, I know you'd ask about the crepe myrtles, if you would, you're, you're welcome to message me privately and just give me your, uh, some way of getting in touch with me, or if you would prefer, you're welcome to call me. I'm gonna scroll back to the end. Well, I went too far, I went to the very end. Uh, so my, my telephone number is 817-392-7343. Uh, and of course, you see my email address there, michael.wellbaum at fortworthtexas.gov. You're welcome to call me, uh, and I'm and I'm happy to uh, have that discussion with you. And I'll I'll record your information off of off of here as well. Hopefully, I answered everybody's questions. I was trying to kind of follow through. Um, Mark, has, Mark asks a follow-up question, is the sewer line work going to be done on T-head? Yes, there is a section of sewer. Uh, let me go back to it just so we can all look at it. Uh, there is a section of sewer line on T-head um, that comes uh, around from North, uh, from North Ridge. We've got to basically lower uh, a good piece of this sewer line all the way up to just past North Hill. Uh, so all of that sewer line will be re reconstructed with new services back to the to the residential connections. We have about 30 minutes before the Cowboy game, so there's still plenty of time for more questions. Well, I certainly appreciate everybody's attendance tonight. Uh, this has been a good group. Uh, hopefully, y'all are as excited about having all this work done as I am. Uh, I know that uh, I know that construction is not um, uh, not the best. It's kind of messy, but when it's done, it's it's much better. So, I'm looking forward to to completing this. Uh, Andy, I'm I'm going to scroll back to that overall map for you. Uh, again, this this presentation was recorded, and it'll be on the city's um, the city's YouTube channel. So you're welcome to to view it again if you if you'd like, and and please share it with your neighbors who couldn't attend. I think they may may get a lot out of it. And and you're welcome, everyone. And and again, thanks thanks for coming. Uh, I don't see any other questions coming in on the chat window, so. Uh, if there are no further questions, y'all have a good evening and stay safe. Thank you, Mark. my information. Thank you. You're for welcome. The Absolutely.